Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to review the Prism Plus C315 Max Monitor. This is a 31.5 inch curved 4K UHD monitor that supports up to 120% as RGB. So my review will be from the perspective of a visual content creator, someone who does graphic design, digital art, edits photos and videos almost on a daily basis. So in this video, I'm going to tell you whether or not this monitor is good enough for the visual content creation workflow. Now this review is going to be quite long, so if you want to save time, you can actually check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below, as well as links to the timestamps so that you can jump to different sections of this video. Now, first of all, disclaimer, this is a review unit provided by Prism Plus, so big thanks to them. I'm going to present this review as uh, balanced as possible. I'm going to present to you my findings basically so that you guys uh, can decide whether or not this is going to be worth your money. Right now I have the monitor connected to Mac OS. This will work with Windows of course. So the design is very clean and simple. At 31.5 inches, this is a huge display. The bezels are quite minimal. Prism Plus says it's a zero bezel design, but I'm actually measured one centimeter at the top and one cm on the sides. The bottom here, it's about two centimeters. But overall, the bezels are quite minimal, which makes the monitor look uh, very compact, despite the huge size. The monitor is quite thin. And this curvature is 1500R. The curvature is quite noticeable from the front and also from the top. So this is how thin the monitor is. It curves to become thicker at the back here where the stand is. And here's a look at the stand. So there's this blue lighting that turns on when the monitor is powered on. This stand has a very minimal design. The metal legs are quite thin but quite stable. The only downside to this stand is there's no way for you to adjust the height and this distance is 8.5 centimeters. The only thing you can adjust is the tilt. So I use this monitor like this with it facing slightly upwards. There is no rotation, so to turn the monitor, you would actually have to reposition the monitor. Now, if you need full adjustability, Prism Plus, they actually do sell a lot of different types of monitor arms. The VESA mount is 7.5 by 7.5 centimeters. There are three full-size HDMI ports. Two of them are version 1.4 and one is version 2. This is full-size display port version 1.2 and that's the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. This is how the cable management looks. There is this hole here between the two legs where you can run the cables through. So now I have three cables through. I can probably fit another one, but it's gonna be quite tight. Build quality and the finishing of this monitor, it's reasonably good for the price. It has a matte texture back. I cannot say much about the durability because I've only used this monitor for a few weeks. Anyway, Prism Plus, they do provide three years warranty for this monitor. Colors on this monitor look good out of the box. The colors are very vibrant. By the way, this is a VA panel. Usually for my editing work, I go with an IPS panel because VA panels, they have certain limitations, which I'm going to show you later on. Anyway, I have already color calibrated the display using my Spider 5 Pro. I measured support for 99% sRGB, 91% P3, 82% NTSC, and 86% Adobe RGB. My color calibrator wasn't able to measure beyond 100% sRGB. Anyway, the color accuracy of this display is quite good. One limitation of VA panels is when you view the display from certain angles, there may be color shift. I'm not sure if my camera can capture the color shift. Anyway, the color shift is quite subtle. For VA panel, this viewing angle is actually considered quite good. 
I'm actually quite surprised by this performance already. So that's the anti-glare, the matte surface display. So I have strong light source coming from the side and this is how it diffuses the reflection. Now chances are when you are using the monitor, you'll be viewing it straight on. So the colors straight on, they look good. 4K UHD resolution is a lot of pixels, which is to say that all the visuals on the display are going to look very detailed, very sharp. Now you may see slight pixelation here, but when working from one arm's length away, the pixelation is not obvious. If you do not apply any scaling to the user interface elements, the tags, the icons, the menu bars, they are going to look a bit small but not as small compared to 4K or 4K UHD on a 27 inch monitor where you definitely need to scale the user interface elements. And when you do scale the user interface elements, sometimes there are issues with scaling, not just with the OS, but also with some of the software that you use. So with 4K on a 31.5 inch monitor, you may not need to do scaling in which case you are not going to have um, all those scaling issues with 4K. Let me quickly run through what are some of the adjustments you can make with the OSD menu. The buttons are here at the bottom right and this power light, you won't be able to see it just by looking at it. It actually uh, points downwards. So let's go in. Navigation around the OSD menu is very easy. So input source is detected automatically. If you have several input sources, then you will need to choose which one you want to use manually. Here you can adjust the brightness contrast. For color settings, you can change the gamma, picture mode, color temperature, low blue light, hue, and saturation. Now for color temperature, uh, they only have warm, cool, and user. There is no way for you to specify specific Kelvin settings, unfortunately. I find that warm uh, gives me um, more accurate colors. So picture quality setting, we have sharpness, uh, response time, noise reduction, all this I'll just leave at default. And audio is from the 3.5 um, audio jack multi-window. You can do picture in picture, but it's only um, two sources, basically the main display and your secondary source. You cannot do like four sources, even though there are four graphic input ports. Not sure if you noticed, but I'm running the brightness at 90% right now for the purpose of this video. Usually I'm just using the display at 50% brightness. Now the maximum brightness that is advertised is 400 nits. I measure 320 nits. So at 320 nits, I'm running it at 50%. So this monitor is considered to be quite bright. And now let's talk about workflow. So this monitor is actually marketed as a productivity monitor. 4K resolution for productivity is fantastic because there are so many pixels. If you are upgrading from 1440p, you get more than two times the number of pixels. If you're upgrading from 1080p, you get four times. So there is a lot of pixels for you to display web pages side by side. So you don't have to switch between tabs. When I'm writing the review, I can have the review here on the side and refer to the product page on the right side and there is still space for me to open up a few folders on the side so this is great for productivity more specifically 4k resolution is great for productivity whether or not the display is flat or curved doesn't really matter when it comes to like doing work but because this monitor has a curvature this monitor is actually designed for people um, I mean designed for productivity but also designed for people who want to do a little bit of gaming on the side now the maximum refresh rate is 60 Hertz so this is more for console gaming anyway if you want to game with your PC at 4k resolution you will need like a very powerful graphics card there are some issues you need to know when you are using a VA panel for graphic design work. 
Now for graphic design work, I always recommend IPS panels for color accuracy and for color consistency. So when it comes to using a VA panel, because the display is so big, even though when you're looking straight like this, the colors look great, but when you tilt your eyeball to the bottom area there, you're actually looking at the monitor at an angle and there is slight color shift. For me, the color shift is not that obvious, so you can still use this for graphic design work, but for people who do care about color accuracy, go for an IPS panel. So where I notice the color shift is actually at the bottom because I'm seated at about this angle, looking downwards, the color shift will happen towards the bottom. Color shift from the left and right is not that obvious because this is a curved display. So at those angles, the display is actually considered flat to uh, your eyeballs. And because this monitor is curved, the straight lines will look curved. It's not really a big deal here, um, at least for this particular page because I mean, when you're drawing a straight line, you know that it's a straight line. So it doesn't really matter if it looks curved or not curved, just that it feels a bit weird uh, when you have a straight line like this. And when the line goes to the sides or go towards the bottom, uh, it's affected by curvature. But overall, um, you can still use this monitor for graphic design work. For photo editing, there are some issues, but let's talk about a good thing first. The good thing is 4K. So when it comes to editing photos in 4K, you get to see the extra resolution, the sharpness, the detail, just fantastic. And the colors of uh, the display also look terrific. So editing photos on this monitor is very satisfying and also because of the 4K resolution, you can squeeze in a lot more files, a lot more photos uh, when you are viewing thumbnails. So you don't have to scroll as much and with the extra resolution, you can also fit in a lot more palettes. And of course, 31.5 inch allows you to see your photo like huge. Okay, the downside is this is a curved display. So when you are viewing photos that need correction uh, for warping, for perspective, um, it's going to be challenging. For example, with this particular photo, um, there are very strong diagonal lines. And when I view some of the lines at the edges, they are sort of like warped. So when you want to make the lines vertical, it can be a bit challenging because the monitor is curved. So that's my main issue. But for uh, product shots like this, I mean, it doesn't really matter whether or not the lines are straight, that straight or that accurate. But when it comes to uh, photos that require accuracy, the curvature, um, you have to take into account of the curvature. For example, with this photo, uh, this was taken like straight down. Now, this vertical line, it's not straight. So you can see the distance here, it's larger compared to the distance here. And when I view this photo on this curved display, um, when I look at it, it seems like there is this additional distortion that's applied because of the curvature of the display. So if you're editing photos, this is something you definitely need to take note of when using a curved display. For video editing, the overall experience is fantastic, again, mostly because of the 4K resolution. So usually when I record my videos, I have a lot of clips and with 4K, I am now able to display, in this case here, almost all my clips. So I can choose the clips I want and drag it to the timeline without much scrolling up and down. On a lower resolution monitor, I have to scroll up and down quite uh, frequently. So now with more resolution, with more thumbnails, it improves productivity. And also due to the size of this monitor, I can scale this player up 
to really see my video in great detail to see whether or not uh, there is any blur if my camera is in focus and due to the large display i can fit my timeline there at the bottom i can also pull up this palette here and i can still see like a good amount of uh, timeline so this monitor i mean this size and the 4k resolution it's just fantastic for video editing as for the curvature it doesn't really affect video editing because even if the lines are curved um, even if the videos are slightly distorted there's uh, no way for me to like correct the distortion anyway so that's why the curvature of the display doesn't really matter much when it comes to video editing uh, same thing when you're doing graphic design work when you are drawing a straight line with um, those um, vector software you know that you're drawing a straight line so it doesn't really so the curvature of the display doesn't really matter however if you are like doing digital art you're drawing um, when you're drawing a straight line it may or may not be a straight line because of the curved display so that's something to take note of if you want to like do digital art on this monitor another thing i really like about 4k monitors is you can watch your 4k videos in actual 4k so it's one-to-one -one pixel mapping so you get to see the extra detail the clarity the sharpness it's very satisfying especially if you are able to watch 4k movies in which case it's going to be a really fantastic experience Watching movies on this monitor is very enjoyable. Whether or not the display is curved or flat doesn't really matter. Watching movies on this monitor is enjoyable mostly because this display is huge. So watching movies on any huge display is going to be enjoyable. Now this monitor has an advertised brightness, maximum brightness of 400 nits. So that's where it gets its HDR 400 um, support. The extra brightness, relatively speaking, compared to other monitors, and the contrast do help in presenting more details, especially details in shadow areas. So, for example, with this particular movie, usually when I'm watching this um, movie on other monitors, the hair here, you see this very dark area here, this will be like just black. But here I can see some highlights, I can see some hair detail like the strands of hair. So that is actually really good compared to other monitors that I use. Here I can see a lot more details in the shadow area. And with this particular scene, usually all these people here who are backlit, um, all this will be just black here i can see a lot more highlight details which is great downside to this monitor is there is noticeable backlight glow so you can see the black bars here at the top and bottom it's not like totally black even for the black uh, for the soldier's uniform it's not like totally black because of the backlight glow IPS panels will have this issue as well, but for this VA panel, it seems to be more obvious. So as I move my camera up, you can see the contrast at the bottom area. Um, there is less contrast. And now when I move my camera down, you can see more contrast. So this difference in contrast from the viewing angle is more noticeable when well my room is dark so earlier on when i showed you the monitor in bright daylight it's a bit difficult to see the color shift and the contrast changes here it's more noticeable thus the backlight glow affect movie watching experience i would say yes however it's still very enjoyable to watch a movie on such a huge display this is how the backlight looks when i fill the display with black color so you can see some glow at the top and also at the bottom and there's this gradation where the glow will 
fade to become much darker towards the center. So the backlight is not completely even. There is this slight gradation, which is actually not that bad. I have seen monitors where there are wavy backlight bleed at the bottom and at the top. So this smooth gradation is all right. Just that the glow of the VA panel, it can be quite obvious when you are viewing the monitor from certain angles. This monitor supports HDCP version 2.2, that's HD content protection. So that may be needed when it comes to streaming movies or TV shows from certain video streaming websites. I do not play games, so I cannot tell you much about gaming on monitors except to tell you the specs of this monitor in relation to gaming. So it tops out at 60 hertz and it's 6 milliseconds gray to gray and there is AMD FreeSync support. Now, all I can say is when I watch this footage, it does feel very immersive. So that's the advantage of gaming on a curved display. 60 FPS gaming is actually quite smooth. Right, to conclude, let me run through the things I like and dislike. I like the design, it's a very clean and simple design. The colors look great out of the box and the combination of 4K on a 31.5 inch display, that's the best combination you can get with a 4K monitor. Things I don't like, I don't like the stand because there is no way for me to adjust the height. And with a VA panel, there are limitations to viewing angles. So earlier on, you saw at certain angles, the contrast can be affected, especially when the room is dark. But even if the room is not dark, sometimes when you look at the monitor from certain angles, there is this color shift. So for visual content creation, I do recommend getting an IPS panel over a VA panel. The backlight glow, um, it's more obvious when you are watching movies or when the display is totally dark, but uh, for general purpose work, like typing documents, surfing the web, watching YouTube videos, no issues at all. So as a general productivity monitor, this monitor is actually quite good. I don't have anything negative to say about this except for watching movies in total darkness. But uh, even so, it's not like that bad. It's just like the VA panel backlight glow, it's more obvious compared to IPS panels. And the contrast with VA panels, not as great compared to IPS panels when the room is in total darkness. But when you are using this monitor in bright daylight like this, the colors and the contrast, pretty good. So my overall conclusion is this, as a productivity monitor, this is quite a good monitor. This is for people who want the extra resolution, who want the huge display, and for people who do a little bit of gaming on the side. The price of this monitor at the time of this review is about 550 Singapore dollars. The price will vary depending on whatever promotion that Prism Plus is uh, running. So for $550, the pricing is actually quite competitive compared to other brands. And the monitor comes with three years warranty. So you can decide whether or not this monitor is worth the money based on uh, the findings that I have presented to you. All right, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Bye.